Great Lakes Prepping here. Pretty straightforward video for you today. Basically, there's a spot in my yard where I want to park my boat, but it's nearly impossible to navigate the trailer to the spot where I want to park it when using my truck. So to more easily maneuver this thing around the tight spaces and obstacles, I will be using my riding mower to move the trailer around my yard. Now, most riding mowers have a small little hole on a metal plate in the back for hooking up a small utility trailer or other yard attachments, but it's too low and not nearly sturdy enough to use with a full-size trailer like the one my boat is sitting on. That means I need to modify it to work for what I need. So I bought one of these garden tractor hitch kits for about 40 bucks, and today I'm going to install it. This kit comes with the main riser piece and also these heavy duty brackets in two different lengths. And the kit comes with all the hardware needed to install the whole thing, but it does not come with a ball. So I had to get that separately. Now, every model of mower is slightly different with regards to how these brackets will need to attach. Basically, the way this kit works is that the main riser piece bolts into the existing riding mower hitch hole, and then these bracket arms will bolt to the back surface of the mower and then attach to that main riser piece. This will give the hitch much more strength and support than you could ever get without using one of these setups. With regards to installation of these little arms, many if not most mowers will already have a couple holes in the back of the mower and the hope is that they will line up perfectly with one of these sets of support arms. At first glance, it seems that these two holes in the back of my Cub Cadet, one of which was hiding behind a little sticker, would work just fine using the shorter set of bracket arms. So that's what I'm gonna try. To get to the backs of these holes, I first have to remove the battery and it's a tight squeeze back there to fit a socket wrench, but I managed to make it work. So now I'll start getting this thing bolted together and see if it all fits. First, the main riser piece goes on with a large bolt, lock nut, and two big flat washers. I won't fully tighten it just yet until the arms are in place. It was clear right away that the longer set of arms would be too long, and at first glance it seemed that the shorter arms would line up pretty well with the two existing holes in my mower. But once I got them bolted onto the riser piece, it became obvious that they were not nearly close enough. The only option at this point is to drill new holes, and I had to make a decision. Drill new holes in the mower or in the hitch riser to change the overall position of the bracket arms so they'll line up to the existing mower holes. My first thought was to drill new holes in the mower, so I wouldn't have to undo all the work I'd already done. But the problem is that there are various wiring harnesses and other components mounted to this back plate right where I would need to drill those holes. So drilling new holes in the hitch piece it is. The riser already has holes in two spots, but a third lower hole would have been perfect for me to make these support arms line up. Oh well, it's for just such occasions that I have a drill press and that made pretty quick work of this. I'm sure this could be done with a hand drill but it would certainly not be quite as easy as this to drill nice straight holes through that thick steel. For lots of mower models, I'm sure these modifications aren't necessary, and some combination of bracket length and existing holes will line up just right. But there are a million mower models out there, and the odds are just as good that you'll have to make some sort of minor customizations, like drilling new holes in either the mower or the hitch riser. Once I got the riser piece bolted back on, I can finally attach those support arms. As I mentioned, it's a little tricky to get a socket wrench back behind those holes, but it's doable and necessary to tighten up those support arm bolts. Now I'll give that lower riser bolt a final tighten, along with the horizontal bolt that holds the riser to the support arms, and then I'll attach my two inch hitch ball. Put the battery back in, and I'm all done. Now to test this thing out. If I didn't know any better, I'd think that the tongue weight of this trailer is too heavy for the mower. Not because the hitch kit isn't strong enough, but rather the mower itself, where the hitch mounts to it. And again, if I didn't know any better, I'd think that a regular old riding mower like this wouldn't have the power to move a trailer and boat of this size. But I'd seen it done many times before in the past, so I felt confident it would work for me. And while you can definitely see the back of the mower go down as the weight of the trailer tongue compresses the rear shocks a bit, everything held up just fine, and the mower has absolutely no problem moving the trailer. Forward, backward, on cement, on grass, it's exactly what I was hoping for. 
And if you want to take a look at the riding mower hitch kit that I used here, I'll put a link to it in the video description below. So that's about it. Be sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date with all our latest stuff, including future DIY videos. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Great Lakes Prepping.